Bokeh Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, also a production of the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And wanted to share something with you guys. And even though this is part of the book I am writing, um, I want to give you just a little glimpse of what happens on a daily basis. And I know I said that I would not share with you guys the things that are in the book because of a very sinister plan and behind the scenes that is trying to disprove that Yeshua is indeed the Messiah and he is the one that is will come and make known to Israel who he is and but th this particular revelation that came to my heart last night as I was writing in one of the chapters of the book is so profound that I just felt that I could not keep it from you because it deals with many that are believers today, many of the Christian church themselves that are believers. And so I felt that it was pertinent that I share this particular insight with you. And again, as I said, as I'm writing this book daily, these things happen daily. These types of insights come to me. And I want to share this one with you because it's just too important to let slip by. And so I want to go and take with you uh, to the very parable that Jesus spoke about here when he was talking about the seed and showing how that the seed is the word of God and it's cast out in different places and how it comes up. And we'll just start here. We're over in the book of Luke. So the sower went out to sow his seed. He gives this parable and he Sowed some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell in good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. All right, now I'm going to come back to this in just a moment, but I want to come back over here to Revelation 18.4, and I want to remind you of this prophecy in Revelation 18.4 when it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. And the coming out of her is Rome not just limited to the Catholic Church, but even those churches that are part of the ecumenical movement uh, that has been going back to the M Mother Rome, bringing all the different denominational religions, not just the Christian churches either, but this is also in Judaism. This is also uh, in the, uh, the Muslim world as well. They are joining up in an ecumenical move, coming back to their mother. And I'm sure many of my Arabic friends that might be listening this, uh, this day about this message here would say Muslims are not Catholic and the Vatican is not our mother. But if Cardinal Bia actually says that Islam was created by the Roman Catholic Church to crush true Christianity, and that Muhammad the prophet was groomed by the Jesuits that were living, uh, the, the, the Catholic monks that were living in northern Africa at the time, and we find this out, Alberta Rivera bringing out much of these things here, then yes, we find out that the Muslim faith is the daughter of the Vatican. This is why you see that the Muslim women are required to wear the head coverings. They, they use prayer beads just like the Catholic Church does. They believe that, that uh, Isa or Jesus was, of course, was uh, a prophet. Why do you think that you embrace so many of the Christian ideology as Muslims if it wasn't for the fact that you were created, that your mother is Rome. And many of the denominational systems that came out of the Catholic Church that are only returning back 
as it speaks about in Revelation as well, that the whore had daughters, you're returning home. Now, the thing is, though, is that we find out that God says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. Now, that can be Jew and Gentile alike, but let me just share with you in here, in we, and we're going to go back to this scripture in Luke in just a moment here. Ephraim is joined with, to idols, let him alone, the house of Israel. Now, that's prophetically speaking, but at the same token, you have to understand the house of Israel, when Jesus of Nazareth walked the earth, they were scattered abroad, but he commanded his apostles to go only unto the lost sheep of what? The house of Israel. And when they went abroad, they had taught in his name. Many believed. They cast out devils, healed the sick. We even find out that from Syria came the sick and the lame and the withered when he was in Galilee. From Syria. And many of them, or all of them were healed, and, and many of them believed upon him, Yeshua, that is, Jesus of Nazareth, they believed upon him. And of course, the first churches in Damascus, which are being bombed today in Syria, this is one of the reasons why, too, friends, they're wanting to kill off those Christians that live in Damascus. This war is not just by chance. They're the oldest Christians in the world, descendants of the oldest Christians in the world, the ones that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ from the beginning. I don't say that they haven't got into all kinds of doctrinal issues as well. But God says to you, come out of her, my people. Don't be a part of this Roman system or any system that joins up with this ecumenical movement. All right, now, what about the my people? Hosea chapter 11, verse 7, And my people are in suspense about returning to me, and though they call them upwards, none at all will lift himself up. You're caught up in Rome. You're caught up in this system. Now, this happened in 325 A.D. Though... We know that Jesus said there were seed that fell amongst good soil and sprang up and brought forth much fruit. But not all seed fell, not all the seed fell in good soil. All right? So, but he says, my people are in suspense. Actually, in the King James, I think they say backslidden. All right? Now, Oddly enough, though, Hosea, we get down to here, again, Ephraim, and Ephraim is speaking, when you see Ephraim, it's the house of Israel. Now, they put in brackets, shall say, because it doesn't say shall say anywhere, it just says, Ephraim, mali or. See, what have I to do anymore with idols? See, le atzabim. What have I have to do anymore with idols? See, when Ephraim was found with his idols over here in Hosea 4, Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. It was a prophecy. Not only did it happen back in the time before he was scattered as a nation when he was got caught up with Balaam, but it also happened in 325. You, you have to understand, the house of Israel was on their way home where both house of Israel and house of Judah before they were ever divided as a nation, when they actually at one time believe God is one whole body. Samuel the prophet was leading them and he was leading them by their king. The God of Israel, the king of Israel was leading his people using his prophet. He would have dealt with them individually, but they didn't want. They didn't want God speaking with them. They said to Moses, let God, you know, let God speak through you and not through, not to us directly. This is where God was first rejected as king. God accepted the secondary method and used a prophet, and that's how Israel was led from that point forward. And then they rejected his mouthpiece. And God says to Samuel, they haven't rejected you. They have rejected me from being king over them. Well, then the king finally came and was born in a 
human being called Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua, Shel Nazareth. And he was rejected as well. There were a small remnant that did believe. That was a seed that fell in good soil. And some of the house of Israel as well believed upon him. But what happened? There was a group of them. As the scripture says here in Luke chapter 8 verse 7 and some fell among the thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it now let me take you down a little further to read about the thorns here what it says in verse 14 he says about the thorns and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection when the house of Israel, the remnants of the house of Israel that had believed the message of Jesus Christ, when their children fell among the thorns, that was among Esau's descendants. That was among the descendants in Rome of Esau there. Because remember, it was Titus the Roman general. And according to the book of Obadiah, as a son of Esau. It was the Romans that actually placed the crown of thorns on the head of Christ. The Romans did that. The Roman soldiers plated a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, mocking him. You see, Rome does not believe that Christ is indeed the king of Israel. Esau never believed it. The ones that were supposed to believe it was Israel's descendants. And at 325 AD, they rejected Yeshua being king over them when they were on their way home. And instead, they crowned a pope. They fell among the thorns. And the thorns have choked them out. Why? Because of the cares and riches and pleasures with this life. No doubt they were offered a better position than the poor peasant life that they were leading. Because remember when Jesus came, what did he say? The poor receive it gladly. Interesting, isn't it? My friends, I do love you. And I can't wait for this book to be finished because it will open hearts and eyes to things that you've never seen before. It's opening up my heart and eyes to things I've never seen before. I trust it's a blessing to you. If you would like to help with this endeavor, because it will be costly to publish the book as well, we'll need your help in doing that as well. Just visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Be a partner with us. Because not only do we need to cover the cost in editing and publishing, but we're wanting to translate this into several languages. Because I think people really need to know. And I will be looking for translators as well once the book is completed. So if you are a translator, email me as well. Let me know if you would be interested when this book is complete. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, production of the New Institute. Shalom. And Yom.